Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be talking about eigenvalues of a compact linear operator. So according to this result, let's see what do we have with us. So the, this theorem here states that the set of eigenvalues of a compact linear operator, the compact linear operator T is given to us, which is defined on the normed space X to the same normed space. So they are saying this set of eigenvalues that is a countable set. This is the first result of this theorem. And the second result, it tells us that the only possible point of accumulation is lambda is equal to zero. Now, first of all, you should understand what is this lambda? This lambda is the eigenvalue for this uh, operator T here, right? So they are saying the possible point of accumulation is lambda is equal to zero. Now, what does that mean? It means that suppose this operator T has many eigenvalues, say we have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and so on. So we can uh, write this to be some sequence lambda n. So now we will say that this sequence lambda n would converge to the point lambda is equal to 0. So that means all the eigenvalues would converge to the eigenvalue 0 here. So this is the statement for this theorem. Now, in order to prove that the set of eigenvalues that is a countable set, what do we do? We prove that the set of for every real number k greater than 0, this set of eigenvalues, that means all the set of all the lambdas which belong to the point spectrum for this operator t, which satis all uh, all those eigenvalues which satisfy this condition that no a mod of all the eigenvalues is greater than or equal to k is finite. So what does that mean? Suppose we have center at the point lambda is equal to zero. We we uh, define some disk having center at the point lambda is equal to zero, and now I take the radius of this disk as k, which is some real number. This number could vary. Now I if I draw a disk here, taking lambda is equal to 0 as center, now according to this condition, all the lambdas, they are lying outside this disk. So we are talking about all those eigenvalues which lie outside such disks. And here, notice that k can also vary because k is any real number greater than 0. So that means we may have disk of such disk of different sizes. So According to the result, they are saying uh, all the eigenvalues lambda which satisfy this condition, that means which lie outside these such kind of disk, they are finite in number. So, uh, if we prove this thing, we uh, have the result that the set of eigenvalues is countable. So, we again move through uh, the proof using the method of contradiction. So, we suppose that this re result does not hold. So what we are trying to say that we say that for uh, some real number we say suppose we have infinite number of eigenvalues now. So we say that for some real number k0 which is greater than 0 obviously we have uh, we obtain a sequence lambda n which now uh, instead of finite number of eigenvalues uh, consist of infinitely many distinct eigenvalues having uh, which satisfy the same condition right for that particular real number k naught right so now because all these lambda n's they are the eigenvalues for the operator t so therefore we can define t x n is equal to lambda n x n for some x n which is not equal to zero right so here x n would act as eigenvector and lambda n would act as eigenvalue right so according to this, we say that the set of all xn's, they form a linearly independent set. How? Because all these lambda n's, they are the eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n of a, lin a linear operator T, which is given to us. Okay. Now considering all these x1, x2 up to xn, as the eigenvectors, we can define a space where uh, all the elements of the space are spanned by all these linearly independent vectors x1 up to xn. So that means every element of this 
span mn that could be represented uniquely as a linear combination of these vectors x1 up to xn right and notice the subscript here this n could vary if we uh, vary the number of vectors here so if i am taking first n vectors so the space would be called mn and so on so that means if i i am talking about mn minus 1 so i'll be taking the span only of uh, x1 up to x n minus 1 right okay so now we can apply this operator t minus lambda and i on to both sides of this equation here so if i do so what do we uh, we have this equation here and if you uh, try and apply or this operator on to each of these individual elements what do we have we have this alpha i that is a scalar quantity could be taken outside t of x1 plus alpha 2 t of x2 and so on when we uh, do this thing for t and when we apply minus lambda and i onto this thing so this thing would be same and we just have to multiply lambda n to all, all of these elements over here lambda n right now we can use the result t of xj is equal to lambda lambda j xj how and why because x j is x j j here varies from 1 to n so all these x1 x2 up to x n they are the eigen vectors so they would obviously satisfy the eigen value vector equation so using the result t of x1 would be lambda 1 x1 t of x2 would be lambda 2 x2 and similarly t of x n would be lambda n x n so uh, now what we can do we can take the terms common here so notice that x1 is here x1 is here so we can club the terms so we have alpha 1 lambda 1 minus lambda n alpha 1 so alpha 1 common lambda 1 minus lambda n into x1 so this is the first term similarly for x2 x2 is here and x2 would be here also lambda alpha 2 and x2 right so we have all these terms here so notice that the last term would be zero why because we would have lambda n minus lambda n so that would be zero so you uh, notice that t minus lambda n i times of x can now be written into the linear combination of vector x1 x2 and up to x up to x n minus 1 right so what does that mean it meant that t minus lambda n i x that is written in the linear combination of the vectors x1 up to x n minus 1 only so what does that mean it means that t minus lambda n i times of x now belongs to m n minus 1 which is the span of these x1 up to x n minus 1 vectors only right where this x was some element which was belonging to the span of x1 to x n so that means it was belonging to m n now we say that all these uh, spans m n they are closed why because we know uh, they have finite dimension because we know the their dimension so we have this result it say it states that every finite dimensional subspace y of a normed space x is closed in x so here also because our subspace is finite dimensional therefore all these mns they are closed and for closed subspaces we have a result given by ries uh, and it is named as ries lemma according to the lemma suppose we have two spaces y and z y is a subspace of z and y is closed in itself right so the we would have some number between 0 and 1 it could be any number we can choose it to be any number such that if we take some element here in the bigger space then the norm of that element is equal to 1 the distance of that element with all the elements of this subspace with all the elements of this subspace y that has to be uh, greater than equal to that Uh, number which is lying between zero and one. So this is the Ries lemma. So now, according to this result, 
we have m n minus 1 we have m n so according to the result here in our case we can uh, take the sequence y n from the set m n such that the norm of this y n is equal to 1 right so this y n is taken from the bigger subspace m n and the distance of th all this y n from all those x which are contained in the smaller space m n minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 by 2 so now notice that the number that we have considered in our case is 1 by 2 which lies between 0 and 1 right so we have uh, we mark this as equation number 2 here our equation number 1 was the one uh, where we have proved that t minus lambda n i uh, when we apply this operator onto x we have this thing to be in the span of x1 to up, up to x n minus 1 right now what we do in order to prove our result we uh, take we show that the norm of t y n minus t y m where what is n and what is n they are the numbers subscripts where n is greater than m right so uh, t of y n minus t of y m norm is greater than or equal to 1 by 2 times of k naught this we will prove and by doing so what we are doing we are proving that the sequence t y n has no convergent subsequence because otherwise the inequality has to be less than equal less than right but in this case we will be proving that this sequence has no convergent subsequence why because for some real number positive real number k naught this would contradict the compactness of the operator t why because we consider y n to be a bounded sequence so because we are given t to be a compact operator if t is compact operator that means if we consider uh, so, uh, t is defined onto x from x right if we consider a sequence y n in this norm space x which is bounded and we apply t onto it it would definitely have a convergent subsequence that is the definition for the compact operator right so if this does not happen in that means uh, it means that this norm is greater than or equal to some real number like this i'm sorry if that does not happen it would contradict the compactness of the operator t right and that would give us uh, lead us to the contradiction uh, contradiction to the assumption that uh, the set is uncountable or it has infinite number of eigenvalues so let's proceed to prove that norm of t y n minus t y m is greater than or equal to 1 by 2 times of k naught so for that we already know that t lambda n what is that t minus lambda i so from here what is t t is lambda t lambda plus lambda i right so when we apply t on to y n so it would be t lambda plus lambda i times of y n not times but we are applying this operator on to y n so that means we are applying this operator on to y n so when we apply t lambda plus lambda i on to y n we have this result and we when we apply the same on to y m we have this result now what we can do we we wanted to take the norm of the difference so we first take the difference of both of these so we can write the difference in this form lambda n y n minus x tilde where all the all other terms uh, apart from uh, this one lambda n y n apart from this term lambda n y n we can write all other terms as x tilde right so in that case we have x tilde as lambda n y n minus t y n plus t of y m right so, uh, now for the index we already know that n is greater than m so that that would mean that n minus 1 would be greater than or equal to m 
so taking this condition here basically it is the same condition so taking this condition here we will now show that this x tilde belongs to mn minus 1 you'll see that in a moment why we are doing this because now uh, m is less than n so m is less than equal to n minus 1 if that is so this index is less than or equal to n minus 1 right so that means uh, if we take y m from m m right so, and because m is less than equal to n minus 1 so the space spanned by m uh, first m vectors would be smaller than the space uh, spanned by n minus 1 vectors and would be contained in this space m n minus 1 and what is m n minus 1 that is nothing but the span of the first n minus 1 eigenvectors right now we say that t of y m belongs to m n minus 1 so that means we are saying when we apply t onto this that would also belong to m n minus 1 why because you see t of uh, any vector x j could be written as lambda uh, lambda j x j because all of these uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda n they are all the eigen value uh, eigen values of the operator t so in this case also because y m belongs to m m so therefore lambda j y m belongs to m m or n m n minus 1 so t of x uh, t of y m also belongs to m of n minus 1 so this is one thing another thing using the first equation we have lambda n y n minus t of y n contained in m n minus 1 this thing so let's see our first equation according to first equation t minus lambda n i this operator applied onto x is contained in m n minus 1 So according to this when we take minus uh, when we rearrange this a little so we have this thing and because this belongs to mn minus 1 so using equation 1 we have this thing contained in mn minus 1 and now clubbing the results t of ym belongs to mn minus 1 uh, this thing belongs to mn minus 1 so basically x tilde belongs to mn minus 1 and if uh, x tilde belongs to m n minus 1 so when we multiply it by some scalar which we are calling it as, as lambda n inverse which is x so that also lies in m n minus 1 so our x belongs to m n minus 1 so basically when we write x n y n minus x tilde so what we are doing and we are taking the norm so we can separate out the terms why because norm of a x that is equal to modulus of a right and uh, modulus of a which is a scalar quantity and norm of the vector quantity x so this thing is uh, we can take lambda n to be common what is x tilde x tilde is equal to lambda n times of x so we can take lambda n outside and we are left with the norm of y n minus x and using equation using this condition of Ries lemma we have y n minus x norm greater than equal to 1 by 2 and use uh, this uh, mod of lambda n is as such and now because our condition uh, was that every eigenvalue has a distance which is greater than or equal to k0 which was some positive real number so using both of these condition we have this norm greater than or equal to 1 by 2 times of k0 so we mark this as equation number 4 now notice that using this equation 4 here and using equation 3 here so what do we have we have t of yn minus t of ym that is equal to lambda n y n minus x tilde and this y n the norm of uh, lambda n y n minus x tilde is that is greater than equal to 1 by 2 times of k0 so we have proved our uh, result which we wanted to prove here this result and uh, if this is there in that case we reach at a contradiction to the compactness of the operator t because 
the selected sequence yn is bounded and moreover the operator t is compact therefore it should have a convergent subsequence but uh, here we say that there is no such subsequence here therefore uh, we have a contradiction and whatever we have assumed is not true so what was, was uh, our assumption our assumption was that there are infinitely many eigenvalues which satisfy this condition for some real number k0 so this assumption is now false so it now prove that there are finitely many eigen such eigenvalues and if there are finitely many such eigenvalues in that case the set of eigenvalues is chosen to be a countable set so therefore we say that a compact linear operator on a normed space has infinitely many eigenvalues and moreover all these eigenvalues they are if they are arranged in a the sequence they would converge to zero the eigenvalue zero so i hope you understood this theorem well well that is it for this video thank you for watching